Yesterday we talked about the prospects for Australia's big four banks. Today we look at how the reform of financial services following the GFC is progressing around the world. An expert on risk and regulation is Gene Ludwig, the founder and CEO of Promontory Financial Group based in Washington. He is also the former vice chair at Bankers Trust Deutsche Bank and served as President Clinton's controller of the currency. And I spoke with him a short time ago. Gene Ludwig, welcome to the program. Tiki, it's nice to be on the show. Well, we've got the G20 meeting behind us now. How have the G20 and indeed the Basel Committee handled the reform process, do you think? Well, they've been very deliberative, very serious. Uh, the fact that you're getting uh, the 20 most sophisticated uh, economic powers together to deal with these issues is all positive. Having said that, uh, it's been a little bit of a rush to judgment. Aren't the proposed reforms of uh, a higher level of capital and liquidity testing at least a start? Well, Tiki, it's interesting. If you look at the successful countries around the world, Australia, by the way, being one of them, Australia, Canada, and you look at the financial crisis per se, it's not clear that capital, as distinct from management, has been the real differentiator and, and good supervision, which uh, you'd have to say Australia has been a, uh, a leader in. We've heard a lot about investment banks when it comes to the financial crisis. What we've heard almost nothing about is the big six accounting firms and to some extent the credit agencies. Well, Tiki, it's interesting. The uh, regulators use what they call a three line of defense model and it's actually a very good model. The first line is line management. The second line is the people we call risk management. And the third is the uh, auditing function, both internal and external. Most of the focus to date, and whether it's G20, Basel, or the individual nations, has been on the second line of defense, that is risk management, and to a lesser degree on the first line of defense, mistake. But to answer your question, there's been very little focus on the third line of defense. Did they discover the problem? Did they get the flares up? Uh, I think that's coming. At the moment, uh, the G20 was floating a bank taxation of some sort. Now that's been thrown out by our Treasurer this week. Um, do you think it's likely to come in in some shape or form in either the US or Europe? It, it might, Tiki. This notion of a bank tax is partly attractive because it's punitive. People feel good sort of retributive justice. And on the other hand, uh, these nations uh, do need some income. Having said that, I think it's the wrong way to go. Uh, you can, in a nation, get away without having a car industry or a steel industry or whatever industry, but you can't get away without having a financial industry in a modern society. And for um, uh, the United States, Europe, uh, Australia, one really wants a vigorous banking sector, and uh, taxing it uh, to death is not the way to achieve that. Now, this brings me to bonuses for banks. Now, in the UK, why should, say, Eric Daniels at Lloyd's be paid £1.4 million for taking over HBOS? Well, Tiki, uh, I understand that that's an area for great public consternation. At the same time, in order to have a vigorous financial sector and a vigorous economy, we need the private sector to be the private sector. And in that regard, uh, I think we have to basically grit our teeth and let the private sector decide how it's going to compensate and compete with each other to achieve the kind of results that the regulators and society want to achieve, which is a vigorous economy, lifting all, all, all boats up. One of the issues, of course, is the possibility of a Glass-Steagall coming back in. That is a, a separation of the, the retail from the investment side of the business in banking. Uh, now, this has been proposed in the UK. I think President Obama is keen on, on a similar sort of thing. Couldn't the President point to six decades of relative banking stability under Glass-Steagall since 1933, and since 1999, when it was repealed, uh, a whole lot of excess, and then a banking collapse. Well, Tiki, that's a very good question, as your, all your questions have been. But it's very interesting. As we look historically at Glass-Steagall, it was probably a mistake, actually, when it was put in the 1930s. It wasn't the mixing of banking and securities that actually got the banking industry in trouble. What actually caused the Great Depression was a good-hearted but mistaken effort to withdraw funds from the marketplace. It was actually done by our Federal Reserve at that time, something that Mr. Bernanke 
he learned from and has done exactly the opposite, which is what kept the economy going. Uh, now there's not so much uh, on the table in the United States a repeal of Glass-Steagall as there is a separation of trading activities, which has been proposed, called the Volcker Amendment, uh, from uh, more traditional banking activities. Here again, I worry that we're learning the wrong lessons from history. There's no real evidence that it was trading activities that caused the financial crisis. Leading British economist Professor John Kay has said that the financial service industry is actually the most powerful political force in Britain and the United States. Do you agree? Well, I don't think that's true in the United States, Tiki. It is certainly true that in Great Britain, the financial services sector is by far their biggest uh, economic uh, driver. Uh, and how they come to grips with that uh, in the city of London is certainly a big uh, issue for Great Britain. On the other hand, it's been a dynamic sector that's produced good jobs uh, and, and, and good development. Regulating in a more um, uh, uh, structured way, in a, in a perhaps more vigorous way than in the past, so we have have, don't have the kind of financial difficulties we haven't had in the last few years. Of course, that's important, but uh, we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater either. Gene Ludwig, it's great to get your insights. Thank you for joining us in Australia again. Thank you, Tiki. It's good to be with you.